I have found a nice example from managerial accounting and it is about the production line decision keep or drop. So this is our company. We are having, this is our income statement. Let's forget about these two lower panels. So the panel A is showing our income statement. So here is our income statement, statement. And it is showing that we are having three production lines. So here is production line number one, here is production line number two, and here number three. And now our question is about the production line number three. Should we keep it, keep or drop it? or drop it and our boss would really like to see hard numbers to make a right decision so we are going to do some calculations but at first let's go through uh, the items we have got in income statement at first of course we have got sales revenue so what have we received from our sales so let's draw it so this is and i will put it a little bit to the right and here is our sales revenue and let's say that from one product, our sales revenue is 100. So that is what our customer is going to pay us. Then there are some variable costs. So right over here are going to be variable, variable costs. So that is uh, for every another, every more unit we produce, the variable costs are going to increase in our income statement. Then these two, if we subtract from the sales revenue, the variable costs, we get to something what is called contribution margin. What is this thing right over here? Contribution margin. Well, our sales revenue is this wall rectangle over here minus variable costs. So our contribution margin should be this whole thing. It should be right over here. So this should be our contribution margin, contribution margin. And I will explain this term later if you are not familiar with it. Then we have some direct fixed costs. So here are some direct fixed costs. Then there are allocated fixed costs. And this is again a little bit tricky concept. Let's take a look. Allocated fixed costs. There are 90,000 here, 18,000 here and 12,000 here. All together it's 100, 120,000. So here we have 120,000. Let's say we are paying for a marketing department. So this right over here is the cost of keeping marketing department, cost of marketing, marketing department. And the problem with marketing department of, or the supporting departments is that we cannot really track the costs. Which of these, our production lines have costed us the most in the terms of marketing? Well, there are five guys sitting in the marketing department. We do not know exactly how much have they worked on each of the lines. So that is why these fixed costs we allocate to the production lines. So let's say according to some variable, we have found out that the gas barbecues production line got most of the attention and we really were promoting it. So as you can see, most, most of our fixed costs for marketing department are going for gas barbecues. Or we can calculate it also other way around. We can calculate it also uh, that the gas barbecues had most, had most of the incomes. So we will allocate as due to the incomes so that our income statement will be sort of a balanced. So we have gotten, we have got some allocated fixed costs and here are our allocated fixed costs. And what we are left with, of course, is what we are hoping for. And that's profit. That's profit. So now you see what contribution margin is. It is a fixed cost. So here are some fixed costs. Then there are allocated fixed costs. And finally, it is a profit. And you can already see it from the word. The contribution margin means the money or the part of our sales revenue that is contributing to our business. Because it is giving us money as a profit we are receiving, then it is uh, paying for our fixed costs. Maybe we have got some rent 
for the machinery we are using or we have taken a loan and this contribution margin is help us to pay off this loan we are having. Okay, so this was the explanation of our income statement. Now, we are wondering about dropping of barbecue accessories. So this another panel is showing us with uh, the, the income statement, how it would look like without barbecue accessories. So let's take a look. The figures are still the same, as you can see, 450,000, 450,000, 110, 110. Of course, the calculation is the same, so we have got 340 and 340 again here. Then we have direct fixed costs, they are still the same. These direct fixed costs are maybe the salary of the guys, of, of the producers of our gas barbecue. So they still keep the same, 60,000 and 60,000. But here is something that is about to change. And it is our allocated fixed costs. So allocated fixed costs. Originally there were 90,000. Now there are 105,000 and some, some $882. Let's take a look on, on our another production line. We have got 90, uh, so we have got 90, 90 again. Oh, sorry, we have got 90 and 60,000. Oh yes, yeah, something is not very right here. And I see, I see, sorry, I did a mistake. So we are not wondering about keeping or dropping barbecue accessories, but about the charcoal barbecues. As you can see, we have got charcoal barbecues. Those are the ones that are being dropped. So the picture is not really the great ones, but that's why you shouldn't really trust the internet always. So we have got our barbecue accessories. So we are dropping this guy over here. And so we have got the empty field over here. Now we have got 60,000 as in our original case and 60,000 again. Then 15,000, 15,000, of course, the calculation of the contribution margin is still the same. So we have got 45,000. Then there is direct fixed costs, which we are able to track, which are again 16,000. And now it changes. The allocated fixed costs are again going to change. Originally, there were only 12,000. Now it is 14,118. 118. So let's take a look at what happened. I will I will take my great calculator and I will try to calculate why have they changed this certain way. So I will clear this out. It was some nice math example. So originally it was 90 plus 120. Now it is 105 plus 14,118. And we have got it summed up. Uh, but I think I will keep this keep this topic of uh, allocation of the fixed cost, which we are unable to track directly for some another video. So <laughs> let's continue. Now we have already uh, have uh, totals of these our new calculations, so that originally we have had 450,000 plus 90,000 plus 60,000 adds up to 600,000. Now, 450,000 plus 60,000 adds up to 510,000. And we simply do all of these calculations. So here we go. 110 plus 15 is 125. And we really do these calculations for all, all of our lines in our new income statement. When we do this, we simply compare this was our alternative A, so this is our alternative A, that we keep all the free production lines. Then this is our alternative B, and finally we are going to compare them. So this is our first alternative and second alternative, and you can really see the numbers. Let's take a look if they really adds up. So we have got 600,000, we have got 600,000 over here. Then we have got contribution margin 435, 435. So you can see this row was copied over here as it is a total of our alternative A. And this row was copied over here as it is our alternative A. And now we calculate the difference between them. So we have got 600,000 minus 510 is 90,000. Uh, I will make the equal sign seem nicer. 
Then 165 minus 125 equals 440,000. And we really do this for all our lines and we end up with the calculation of profit. In our first scenario or in our alternative A, we would have profit 199,000, but in our second scenario, minus 189, we have got the difference on of 10,000 and our profit is higher. So you can see our sales revenue is higher, our variable costs are higher, our contribution margin is again higher, then our direct fixed costs are higher and our allocated fixed costs remain the same as we have told previously. So the final decision is that we should drop. We should drop because our profit is going to be $10,000 higher.